Robert Smalls, true action hero. Okay, this is where I need my action music right here. His plan that he put together to go from slave to full on politician is just amazing. But this is a true story, not a folk story, not a Marvel movie. This is a real man. So a little history about Robert. Uh, as a teen, he served and worked in many different jobs. Robert's mother knew that Robert was smarter than just, you know, the average kid at the time. So at her request, she asked the slave master to send Robert into town, into Charleston to find more work. He was kind of rented out by slave masters to different slave owners. But he found his way into the harbor where he served on their various ships. And this is where he gained his knowledge of the Charleston Harbor. He served in a hotel, he served as a lamplighter. Uh, most of his, almost all of his money would be given to his slave masters and he was only allowed to keep one dollar. Later when Robert was about 17, he got married and he knew that he couldn't spend the rest of his life as a slave. So he asked his slave master, if he could purchase his family's freedom. Now the cost to purchase his family's freedom was about $800. Robert knew that was a steep price and he would never be able to save that much money. At the time, he only saved about $100. So realizing that he would never be able to save that much money, Robert needed a plan. He needed a way to gain his freedom. $800 in today's money would be around twenty-two dollars to $23,000, the price of just a car. So at the beginning of the Civil War, Robert was assigned to work on the CSS Planter in 1861. Now the main job of the CSS Planter was to carry ammunition throughout the harbor, uh, weapons and supplies for the Confederate soldiers to the different forts um, throughout South Carolina and through the harbor. Robert Smalls, he observed the harbor and the crew members for about a full year before he put his plan into place. His vast knowledge of the Charleston Harbor is what gave him the confidence to put his plan into place. Now, Robert knew that he couldn't be taken alive. So if he were caught, he and his crew members decided that they would just blow up the ship. Freedom by any means necessary. The story is the crew members went into town and left the ship. This is when Robert knew this was his chance. Robert dressed up like the captain Imitating the captain, he mimicked the way he walked. He even went as far as to go get a straw hat, which was the captain's signature uh, hat at the time. When opportunity presented itself, Robert took full advantage. So after the crew members left the ship, Robert sailed to the first checkpoint where he would pick up family members of fellow slaves. And this is when the plan started. So to put this plan, into place, Robert had to sail through four Confederate checkpoints. So first he had to sail past Castle Pickney, Fort Johnson, next Fort Ripley, and the last checkpoint, the most dangerous of them all, with cannons armed and ready to shoot, was Fort Sumner. So as the ship came upon Fort Sumner, Robert knew this was the most dangerous point of the plan. If they were caught here, the plan would be over and Robert would have to go to his plan B, which would be to just destroy the ship altogether. Some of the other fellow slaves and members of his crew thought that Robert should sail further away from Fort Sumner, but Robert knew if he diverted from the original path, the Confederate soldiers would be tipped off at this point. So Robert stuck to his guns, didn't change course at all, and continued to sail past Fort Sumner. He gave the signal sailed past Fort Sumner, they gave the okay. And you would think at this point, everybody on the ship would start celebrating. But this is not over. This is no time to celebrate. As they sailed past Fort Sumner, they sailed into the Union Navy blockade. Because now we have the situation where a Confederate flagged vessel is sailing out and it begins to approach the vessels of the Union Naval Blockading Force. Fortunately, the vessel was not fired on. As astonished Union officers boarded the planter, Small stood at attention, saluted, and spoke. I am delivering this war material, including these cannons, 
and I think Uncle Abraham Lincoln can put them to good use. So this wraps up the portion about Robert Smalls. Like I said, this was a great story. I don't know why they don't talk about Robert Smalls more. It needs to be in the history books. He's a real action hero at the end of the day. Um, this isn't fiction. This isn't a Marvel story. This actually happened. Uh, so this is dedicated to all the slaves, all the rebellions, and the slaves that actually gained their freedom through just pure grit and just said, no, I will not be a slave anymore.